we're gonna go over um, some fastener stuff like head bolts mostly head bolts because this is like a constant topic of conversation and I feel like we were kind of the first to like talk about doing an 11 millimeter head stud conversion and the whole reason really why we do a bigger stud generally it's more affordable and easier to get your hands on a bigger stud of a lesser material when you do get a stud of really good material you can achieve the same results as a larger diameter stud with a smaller diameter more affordable to use a better material without modifying anything with the block than it is to buy semi-affordable studs and do and pay the labor to convert the stud to a, a larger diameter I'm, I'm talking about like block work you know 11 millimeter head stud requires the head gasket to be reamed all the holes to get reamed out as well as the head has to be reamed to a larger size 10 millimeter stud would technically fit in the head without any modification but you still would need to do modifications to the head gasket so the original um, brp design is a nine millimeter head stud back in the day so it's 2023 now so when we first got into this like 18 19 there were a lot of issues with guys pulling the threads out of the blocks and there's a lot that goes into that beyond just a weak block but there's constantly modifications done to studs a lot of things that go into a thread so 11 millimeter stuff was great it worked really good now we have like you know 625 plus nine millimeter head studs actually have a you know a, a skidmore wilhelm clamp load tester this will tell us the amount of bolt tension in pounds we can achieve by torquing a stud if you can torque a stud to a number say you use an ARP molly lube, you torque a stud to 60 foot pounds. It really doesn't matter if it's a half inch stud or a nine millimeter stud. As long as you can achieve that, that like torque value, you will achieve very similar bolt tension results. We actually, um, I look back, you know, we did this testing a long time ago. And uh, so stock, a stock stud in yield did 6,000 pounds. When the ARPs were first released, they're, they're recommended with a 45 foot pound torque value, which is, it was actually like 5,900. It was just under 6,000 pounds of force. We then went to about yield, which is 62 to 64 foot pounds with ARP. And we got up to 8,200 foot pounds. The ARP 625 comes recommended at 70 foot pounds. That gives us 9,000 pounds of force. And then we actually torqued the 625. We were going to see if we can yield it. And uh, we actually got to 11,500 pounds of force, which when we originally did our 11 millimeter stud, we were torquing the 80 to 85 foot pounds and we achieved the 11,000 pounds of force number. So basically, if we can torque this block up multiple times to say 85, 90 foot pounds, we can achieve very similar, if not the same results as a big stud torqued to whatever number you want to decide to torque to. We are, we have a used block here. This thing's just been sitting by the mill for a long time. It does have some like chain guide wear. Uh, I don't think it's been overheated, but we're gonna put a torque plate on it and put it in the hone just to pull this stud up to 85 foot pounds and see if the factory threads can actually hold on to this number. We've been doing more and more of nine millimeter 625 studs in people's engines, even like the higher level engines, try to combat the possibility of the block cracking in this area. Like this is always the conversation is you spend all this money, we build this badass engine and something happens and you crack the block and it's basically junk. Even if this nine millimeter stud pulls the thread out, we can still service the engine. We could put a larger stud in. We've been really pushing to do the 625 plus stud, which at the end of the day, we make less money doing this. You know, like a lot of the times, 
Like I refuse to sell something if it's like, if there's a better option, even if it makes us less money. Like I will not sell you guys something that is not the best or what I feel is the best in its current state. So, and I guess that sometimes causes things to change throughout the years because more products come out and things like that. But basically we're gonna put some head studs in this thing, put the torque plate on it, torque them all up to 80, see if they can handle 80. And then we're just gonna go up to 85, see if they can handle 85. I know that the bolt is not in yield at 85 foot pounds with Molly on it. If we can get to 85, then we're just gonna stop and this block will be a usable block still. So we're gonna get this set up and we'll continue the video. Or a thou out of round at the very bottom from here to here. So uh, I talked about torque plate and I didn't explain at all what a torque plate does or why we do it. So talked about it a little bit, like the deformation of the block as you torque it and deformation gets worse the more we torque it. So we do increase clamp load when we use a standard head stud. And then as you increase that clamp load, I mean, we're adding thousands of pounds of force pulling up on this block here, you know? So it's going to move it and the more like weak the block is structurally, the more it moves. So these blocks move quite a bit. Yeah. Generally speaking, we'll see them move by just putting the insert in, it's five thou. Yeah. And then this block from top to, this block is used, so it's not like. Yeah, there is somewhere in it. It's not like the perfect situation, but it was three thou out of round on the top. Yeah. From stud hole, basically from stud to straight this way. Yeah. And then at the bottom, it was. A thou. Out a of thou out of round. And then the taper was basically three thou a taper. Yeah. You're, I mean, we have a, we have the, like the number of, of taper from top to bottom. So whole size at the top to whole size at the bottom is like about what piss in the wall is in general. Yeah. So like if you're trying to really be accurate with honing an engine to say like three, three thousandths of an inch to three and a half thousandths of an inch, you, you can't have an accurate number if you're not torque plate honing the engine. Because once you pull this, like if you hone the engine perfectly straight without a torque plate, and then put a cylinder head on it and torqued it through these numbers, the cylinder head is basically basically what we're using this to simulate. And it, it's gonna deform the bore. And then all that pretty machine work you did is basically, I mean, it's not like useless. There's a lot of room for air, but it's not as good as it should be. Let's go that way. I mean, the OEMs, they're not torque plating it, but they're not also doubling the amount of clamp load on each stud boss to deform the bore. Right, it doesn't deform nearly as much if you're on a stock head bolt. Yeah. Uh, it's not torque and everything that yeah. factory clamp load. It's probably only distorting a thou, which yep. isn't ideal, but it's not. It's not the end of the day, yeah. But when high performance engines and all these other things you're doing, uh, you know, we did a test back in the day with the half inch head stud stuff, torquing up to much higher values. And the trend just gets bigger. You know, like an hourglass is the cylinder when you like, when we're torquing the mains really high on those and torquing the head studs really high. It would like hourglass the cylinder like a thou. And then when we put the big studs in it, torque them down even harder, it made like two thou a variant. I mean, some of these numbers aren't critical, critical to some, but they're critical to us. So that's why we pay attention to them. I just kind of want to go over like the torque plate in general and... Yeah, the numbers start mattering a lot more yeah. when you're doubling, tripling, and quadrupling the... Yeah, like cylinder pressure goes up, the percentage, you know, like you're gonna have a leak down percentage. You know, so say you're, the target is three to 2% of leak down. When you've doubled the cylinder pressure, you know, that leak down percentage needs to stay, you know, really small. I mean, like an engine that's in a dirty environment will get up to like 5%. And then you'll notice as an engine wears more, you're starting to put more in the catch can, you're probably in the 10% range. It'll still make good power, but cream of the crop. It rises right to the top. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that showed up late. It did. <laughs> you ordered that for Christmas and you just got it. <laughs> That's pretty dope. All right, all right, all right. This block is not the best candidate, but it's a good one to test. Yeah. The threads are a little. They've seen better days. Clamped. Clamped. Let's go 70 first, and then we'll just go 80, then 85.
I guess that's the other thing too is like the torque value is a measure of friction. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, if it's everything's perfect and consistent from one note to the next, then you can use it to determine clamp load, but inconsistency. Like I've actually seen like Molly, this ARP Molly lube is not the like least amount of friction. No, it's not. But it I've seen a guy do a test because like every time you torque it, you polish the threads. Right. So, but a guy did a test where he torqued them like 10 times and Molly was the most consistent pole to pole. Oh, uh, yeah, because the one that is slipperier yeah. is that place from Chicago, uh, so they use like an extreme pressure lube or whatever mm -hmm. that Cali's used on a lot of their like HB and like Comstar stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's. That's the hard part is, uh, you know, I'd say that's probably why they have to work in such a, a like a safety value. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they have to send these out to the masses and they got a million different torque wrenches, different calibrations, different methods different of, of applying. Knowing. So we, uh, you know, so it's 70. That was 70. It's 70. All right, let's go 80. All right. Let's go, uh, 75, try 75 on all of them. Because we can always put it in the, if we can consistent. It has no lie. Exactly. The amount of rotation, that, I mean. That ramp stays the same from one to the next. Yeah, I think Beautiful. our stud kit is going to be torquing. Yep. So 75? 75 is good. All right, let's do 80. You're getting a workout, bro. Workout was when I did like 10 blocks in a day. <laughs> ARPs came a long way with this stud, the profile, the, the thread. Yeah. I mean, it's, this block isn't nice, but it's really tight on the way in. Yeah. Like, it's not loose at all. Yeah. So that's 80. That's 80. So now we're at what most people torque their 11 millimeter studs with in a, a uh, dirty block with 11,000 pounds of clamp load. I mean, our Mitsubishi stuff that we run 90 pounds of boost on yeah. is uh, 100 foot pounds. Yeah, because uh, uh, one thing we ran into, here's back with the 4G heads, if you got above like 95 foot pounds, it would just crush the column of aluminum down. Yeah. And even doing like the shoulder washers, you could get to like 110 before those started yeah. getting wonky. Yeah, maybe we'll do a video next with the Fuji paper, the pressure paper. Because, yeah. <clears throat> like, the next thing that comes into play is uh, head deformation. You are clamping 11,000 pounds on each one of those columns, and the inevitability of that thing deforming, like the actual ceiling surface all the way around the cylinder, like, you get a huge amount of pressure around the studs, but in between the studs, it's giving up the, it's like, flexing out of the way you know it's like c-shaping so this this video is mostly for people that like are asking about doing bigger studs we've done stud conversions on blocks that pull threads you know trying to save a block but 80 foot pounds right now we're gonna go to 85 but 80 foot pounds right now um on a on a used block is you know pretty damn good with this stud i'm like really happy with it so let's see what happens here Does it feel weird yet? A little bit. Yeah. I think this is the one that's going to give up on us. Is it? I think so. Where are you at? 82. Yeah, 70. Yeah, it's all jacked up. Yep. Let me try the other ones. Let's see. Is that washer rotating? No, I got it. All right. So now we're better than what we used to torque a lot of our 11 millimeter stuff to. So 
Um, basically, I mean, we didn't yield this bolt yet, but I, mean, I don't know. I know. I'm fairly confident we can't yield this bolt in the factory. In the factory. Neither of the aluminum is pulling threads out. <laughs> but um, we're actually uh, we're working on our 22 a little bit right now. We're uh, either Joey can cut this out or add it in. I don't care, but. We're doing a block for this thing after we try to set the horsepower record on a stock motor. Uh, this thing has, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it, it's a stock engine with like 70 miles on it that James normally races. <laughs> put an uh it's an xr54 this is the og turbo that i ran in my 120 car what like two years ago or three years ago 